Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to P2 webinar for June 2018. Today is day two and we will be solving a question on foreign subsidiary statement of financial position. Recently in December 2017 income statement relating to the uh, foreign subsidiary was being examined and now for the current attempt I have told you earlier that three important areas includes a complex roof which is the top priority statement of cash flows which is the second priority and third is the foreign subsidiary statement of financial position. So let's start the question. This is a question relating to December 2015 attempt. The question says that the following draft financial statements relate to bubble a public limited company and two other companies in which it owns investments. So bubble is the parent company salt is the local subsidiary because the currency is same and let's call this T. T is the foreign subsidiary having currency of the NARS. So the question is given as a balance sheet property plant equipment investment in salt invest, investment in tea and looking at, at the balance sheet we actually start from this area. This is the area from where we are going to start our answer and I will be using a new sheet to write down the calculation. So we will be starting from working number one working number one is basically net assets and the net assets at acquisition net assets at balance sheet date and we have equity shares retain earnings and other components of equity so the share capital retain earnings and OC is 50 74 and 12 so 50 74 and 12 will be the values at the balance sheet date and this is our first subsidiary by the name of salt and the second subsidiary is having the value of 210 and 292 add acquisition add balance sheet 210 and 292 So whenever we start the question, we actually note down the values uh, relating to the net assets. Now let's read the question from the adjustments where the question says that bubble acquired 80% of the equity shares of salt on 1st November 2013, which is how many years back? Let's see the date at the balance sheet. It was 2015. And we have acquired the shares in 2013, which is two years ago. When Sol's retail earnings were $56 million and other components of equity were $8 million. So this is going to be 56 and this is going to be 8. The fair value of the net assets of Sol was $120 million at the date of acquisition. The question has informed us the fair value of net assets. Why does the question informs us the fair value of net assets? To calculate the fair value adjustment. So 50 plus 56 plus 8 will give us a total of 114, which means that fair value adjustment relates to um, is, is of $6 million. This does not include a contingent liability. So in 120, the contingent liability is not included which was disclosed in SALT's financial statements as a possible obligation of $5 million. So in case of consolidation, what do we do is that all assets and all liabilities of subsidiary, all assets and all liabilities of subsidiary are measured at fair value, including any contingent asset or contingent liability. So although this is a contingent liability for subsidiary, but for us, this should be recorded in the financial statements by what amount by five million dollars uh, sorry by what amount at its fair value five million is the possible obligation this is not the fair value the fair value of the obligation was assessed as one million dollars at the date of acquisition and remained unsettled at 31st October 2015 so we will be recording another fair value adjustment relating to the contingent liability by one million dollars at acquisition and at balance sheet why we are writing a negative value because 
increasing the liabilities will actually reduce the net assets increasing the liability will actually reduce the net assets that is why we have written the value as a negative value now the question further says that 5 million is still disclosed as a possible obligation with no change in its fair value there is no change in the fair value any remaining difference in the fair value of the net assets at acquisition relates to non depreciable land so the question is talking about the previous 6 million dollars that relates to land which means property plant equipment and the same value will be written at the balance sheet date the question further says that the fair value of the non controlling interest at acquisition was estimated as 25 million so this is the fair value of nci bubble always adopts full goodwill method under ifrs 3 business combinations so we will be using this fair value of nci while calculating the goodwill in working number 2 okay so let's see the questions namil is asking sir can i ask you p2 question directly instead to ask in a group uh, namil it's better to ask in the group because that will give uh, other students an opportunity to reply as well because due due to my classes and due to my busy schedule it is difficult to reply to each and every student so it's better if if every student can discuss along with the other students that will help you more <clears throat> Sabai is saying, please could you repeat the part about contingent liability? Sabai, all assets and all liabilities of subsidiary are consolidated at fair value at the date of acquisition. Now, when we say all assets and all liabilities, this will include the uh, the contingent assets and the contingent liability as well. This will include both contingent assets, contingent liabilities, and all other assets and liabilities. okay i will basically uh, I, uh, i will request the admin to please share the the group link of p2 so that people can can actually uh, add themselves and if you are having problem it will be better if you can share me share a message with me on my whatsapp i will send you the link directly clicking on that will add you directly in, into the group so you can drop me an sms to, to be added into the group multiple students have asked about this noted okay now let's read adjustment number 2 where the question says that bubble also owns 60% of the equity shares of t a company located overseas so we were having 80% shares in the direct subsidiary and 60% shares in the foreign subsidiary so let's write it down that we are having 80% shares in the subsidiary salt and 60% shares in the subsidiary t so that we 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 uh, it is easier for us to remember throughout the question which uses dinars as its functional currency the shares in t were acquired on 1st november 2014 one year ago at a cost of 368 million dinars the cost was 368 million dinars so we will be using this while calculating the goodwill at the date of acquisition retain earnings were 258 million dinars so retain earnings were 258 million dinars and t had no other components of equity and the value of the other components of equity was zero no fair value adjustments were deemed necessary in relation to the acquisition of t there is no requirement of the fair value adjustment the fair value of the non controlling interest was estimated as 220 million dollars at the date of acquisition so all these values will be used while calculating goodwill an impairment review of goodwill was undertaken as at 31st october 2015 and no impairment was necessary in relation to salt for salt there is no fair value adjustment but goodwill of t is to be impaired by 20% so 20% is the impairment neither bubble salt nor t has issued any equity shares since acquisition so neither companies have issued any shares so we have done adjustment 1 and 2 so far
Okay, so now let's try adjustment number three, where the question says that on 1st Feb 2015, Bubble gave an interest-free loan to T for $10 million. Parent Bubble has given a loan of $10 million to our subsidiary T. T recorded this correctly in its financial statements using the spot rate of exchange. T has recorded this in dinars, obviously. So has recorded this using the spot rate of exchange. So what was the spot rate of exchange? On 1st Feb 2015, it was $9 million. Uh, sorry, nine, 9 dinars to dollars. So using the rate of 9, T would have recognized this at 90 million dinars. T repaid $5 million on 1st July 2015. T has repaid $5 million when the spot exchange rate was $1 to 10 dinars. So at the time of repayment, the rate was 10, 10, dollars, uh, 10 dinars to, uh, to the dollar. T therefore reduced its non-current liabilities by 50 million dinars. So T has reduced its liabilities by 50 million dinars. No further entries were made in T's financial statement. So T has a non-current liability of 40 million dinars. The remaining balances remain within the financial asset of bubble and the non-current liabilities of T. So $5 million is recorded in T's financial statements and $40 million is recorded in $5 million is recorded in Bubbles financial statements and 40 million dinar is recorded in T's financial statement. Now the question is, has T recorded the loan correctly in its financial statements or is there some accounting error? Because the loan was given when the rate was 9, the repayment is done when the rate was 10 and now at the balance sheet date, the rate is 9.5 so logically t should record the remaining loan of 5 million dollars at the closing rate of 9.5 so if the rate is 9.5 the liability should be 47.5 million dinars it should be 47.5 million dinars because the rate at the year end is 9.5 so the liability is understated in the financial statements of t so what we need first thing is to increase the liability in the books of T by 7.5 million dinar. So if I go on to my working number one and I'm going to say that T should record the non-current liability or T should increase the non-current liability by 7.5 million dinars which will actually decrease the net assets. Increasing the liability will actually decrease the net assets at the date of acquisition. This will actually decrease the net assets at the date of acquisition. Any confusion so far? The first step was to decrease the net assets by increasing the liability of T. Nan, I will basically uh, post the, the, the PDF files today on the group, on P2 group, so you can uh, get the files from over there. Yes, Namila, we will be solving the impairment adjustment later on. We can discuss it over there. The working sheet is now, you want to see this this working? And then we are going to write this at balance sheet only because this is this 7.5 million relates to the loan which which has been retranslated at the year end at the balance sheet date. Yes, Safula, you can you can even prepare an accounting entry for this. There's no harm in preparing the entry. But that would that would create a more problem for you while calculating the exchange gain or loss later on. No, Sabah, the loan was not correctly recorded in the question uh, uh, by T because it was recorded at 40 by the question and it should have been recorded at 47.5. So we have recorded this movement. 
Now, when we have brought the liability at 5 and 47.5 according to the rate, if we see according to the group, if we see according to the group, the group does not have any financial asset or the non current liability. For group, it is neither a financial asset nor a financial liability. So we should be eliminating both. So what entry should we should we be preparing to eliminate this? We will be preparing an entry as non current liability debit by $5 million and financial asset credit by $5 million because from the group's perspective, the group has no liability and the group has no asset. It is an intra group balance. Yes, Umar Abdullah, this is the question of foreign subsidiary. So what we have done is that we have increased the loan from 40 to 47.5 and why we have done so because the loan was taken when the rate was 9 repaid when the rate was 10 and now the rate is 9.5. So which rate is preferable the year end rate because all assets and all liabilities are consolidated at the closing rate. So first the liability should be brought to the closing rate and then we are going to consolidate that. So adjustment number three has been done. This was one of the difficult uh, adjustments in the question. Yes, Afullah, we will be adding 7.5 in the balance sheet uh, in the non current liability section. Now, we 7.5 loss should be recorded in PL because it is a monetary liability as per IS 21. The liability is a monetary liability, that is why it should be recorded in the, uh, the exchange gain or loss should be recorded in PL. Yes, we have recorded the adjustment of 5 million Safila. We have made an accounting entry as non current liability debit, financial asset credit by 5 because from, groups, from the group's perspective, there is no asset, there is no liability. So we have eliminated both. Kanan adjustment one and two were more of the information that we have written in working one. There was nothing too much difficult. Now the adjustment number four, the question says that bubble wished to expand its overseas operations. And on 1st May 2015 acquired an overseas property with a fair value of 58.5 million dinars. So we have acquired a property with a fair value of 58.5 million dinars. In exchange for the building, Bubble paid the supplier with land, which Bubble had held but had to determine its use. We were having the land, but we didn't know ourselves about the use of that land, which means that this land should have been under IES 40 investment property. And what we are doing is actually we are giving a land and getting a property in exchange. So this is a case of exchange of assets. What is the accounting of exchange of assets? When we give asset and when, when we get another asset, what do we actually do? We say that the purchased asset, the purchased asset, which in this case is the building is recorded at the fair value of the asset given up. In case of exchange, the purchase asset is recorded at the fair value of the asset given up. So in this case, the property that we are buying should be recorded at the fair value of the land. It should be recorded at the fair value of the land. No, Nita, we should we, we, we are not going to take the fair value of the asset acquired. We are purchasing property, but we are not going to record the property at its fair value. Instead, we are going to record the property at the fair value of the land because this is a case of exchange of assets. Like, for example, if I exchange my mobile with you, if I exchange, I sell you my mobile and I buy your, your mobile from me. So if someone asks you uh, for, for what price have you bought my mobile? What is the cost of my mobile to you? The cost to you is the fair value of your mobile because that is the opportunity cost you have paid to purchase an asset. 
so in this case the fair value of the land that we are giving is an opportunity cost to purchase the property that is why we will be recording the property acquired at the fair value of the land now let's get back the carrying amount of the land was five million dollars the carrying amount of the land was five million dollars so it so the entry should be property plant and equipment debit investment property credit by five million the investment property should be credited by five million but it had an open market value of seven million dollars so the property should be debited by seven million dollars with two million dollars being taken as a gain on disposal to retain earnings this was the correct entry property plant equipment being recognized at seven investment property d recognized by five and the gain on disposal recorded at two and then i'm not getting your question how would you know that which fair value is more clearly evident actually we need the fair value of the asset given up simply that is the value that is relevant to us okay atiba islam is saying to repeat please atiba whenever we are exchanging an asset with with another so the asset we are purchasing what is the cost of that asset what is the cost of that asset we are exchanging these two pens i'm giving you this pen and buying this pen from you now i'm buying this what is the cost of this pen because the cost is the other pen that i've given to you now the fair value of this pen is actually the cost of this one so the fair value of the purchased asset is actually uh, 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 the fair value of the asset given up is actually the cost of the asset that we have purchased so the entry should have been recorded at 7 pp debit by 7 investment property credited by 5 and the balancing figure taken to retain earnings now the question says that bubble was unsure as to how to deal with the transaction and so has transferred 5 million from investment property to property plant equipment the entry made by the question is actually investment property credited by 5 property plant equipment debit by 5 which is an incorrect entry so we will be recognizing a correcting entry the transaction has commercial substance so now what entry should we be writing finally property plant equipment debit by 2 million because the question has already recorded 5 we were we wanted to require uh, to record it 7 the investment property is credited correctly by the question so we will be recording gain retain earning credit by Two million dollars. So the entry is property, plant, equipment, debit by two, retained earning credit by two. This is the final entry that should be recorded in the financial statements. Now the question further says that in addition, Bubble spent point five million dollars. In addition, Bubble spent point five million dollars. to help relocate the staff to the new property so we have incurred some relocation cost as well and added this amount to the cost of the asset do we capitalize the relocation cost no relocation cost is actually expensed out so what entry should should we make now it has incorrectly capitalized so we will be debiting retain earnings and we will be crediting the property plant and equipment by 0.5 million dollars so first we have increased the property from 5 to 7 and then we have uh, expensed out the uh, the amount of the relocation cost bubble has made no other entries in the financial statements in relation to the property so actually it had recorded by 5 added 0.5 and according to us the asset should be at 7 question is recorded the asset is at 5 we first brought it to 7 and then we have expensed out the relocation cost bubble has a policy of depreciating property over 35 years so has the question charged the depreciation or not the question is saying that the life is 35 years has the question charged the depreciation or uh, uh, are we required to charge it
should we record the depreciation or should we expect it to be recorded in the question actually the question has already informed us above that bubble has made no other entries it has only recorded 5 and 0.5 which means the question has not yet depreciated the asset because it has written very clearly that the that no other entry has been made which means the depreciation has also not been recorded so we are expected to record the depreciation over the value of 7 million dollars so 7 divided by 35 years will give us the annual depreciation and we have bought the property on 1st may with the year end being 31st october so may june july august september october so we are going to charge 6 months depreciation so 7 divided by 35 into 6 by 12 will give us a depreciation charge of 2.5 so first we should be charging depreciation of 2.5 for that we need to make an entry as retail earnings debit property plant and equipment credit by 2.5 million dollars so now our asset is at 4.5 million dollars the question had recorded it at 5.5 according to us it should be at 4.5 Now the question says and and follows the revaluation model under IES 16 property plan and equipment. The question follows the revaluation model. Nabila wants to see what how we have calculated the depreciation. Nabila, this is the depreciation. Seven million dollars divided by thirty five years into six by twelve. This is how we have depreciated the asset. Okay, it's not 2.5, it's 0.1. Okay. It's not 2.5, it's 0.1. So the asset should be at 6.9. Okay, let me correct the entry as well. It's not 2.5, this is 0 0.1. Now the question says that due to a surge in the market, it's estimated that the fair value of the property is 75 million dinars at 31st October 2015. So now the value has increased to what? to 75 million dinars and the exchange rate at the year end was 9.5 so 75 divided by 9.5 will give us the um the fair value at the year end what fair value are we getting seven point nine so the asset should be revalued upwards actually by one million dollars so we should be revaluing the asset upwards by one million dollars no nabila they have not depreciated the asset because the question had said us earlier that no other entries have been made which means that the question has only recorded 5 and 0.5 no other entries have been made means the question the asset the question has not been depreciated the question has not depreciated the asset Tondera is saying that the, the relocation costs have been deducted from PPE why are we still charging depreciation at 6.9 actually Tondera it was being capitalized by the question the question had recorded initially the asset at 5 and then added 0 0.5 but we have but, but, but we have reversed 0 0.5 and we have uh, remeasured the asset to 7 so that is why we are charging depreciation on 7 so finally we should be revaluing the asset property plant equipment debit by 1 million revaluation reserves basically means other components of equity 
by revaluation reserve we would mean other components of equity so the entries property plant equipment debit oc credit canan it's rounding off difference 7.8 7.9 both the values will be considered to be correct so any confusion in this we can even make a net entry because a lot of property plan equipment debit credit and this may create a problem in the future for us so what we can actually do is we can select these values and we can move them aside and instead we make a net entry as pp debit credit plus 2 minus 0.5 minus 0.1 and plus 1 will actually give us 2.4 so the net impact is pp debit by 2.4 2 impact 0.5 impact 0.1 impact and 1 impact and oce credit by 1 with retained earnings credit plus 2 minus 0.5 and minus 0.1 means crediting by 1.4 so the net entry is actually oce credit by 1 retained earnings credit by 1.4 and pp debit by 2.4 so retained earnings also incorporated in the net entry so you you have both the options you can either make all of the entries or you can make a net entry as a final entry in the question both the treatments are correct any confusion so far tell him this is december 2015 question number 1 december 2015 question number 1 Okay, now let's solve adjustment number five, where the question says that Bubble operates a defined benefit scheme for its employees, but has yet to record anything for the current year. Bubble has not recorded anything for the current year, except to expense the cash contribution, which were six million dollars. So the question has actually expensed the contribution as retained earnings, debit, and bank credit by. Six million dollars. The opening position was a net liability of fifteen million dollars, which is included in the non-current liabilities of Bubble. So actually, in DBO, what do we do? Is that we write the brought down, the interest cost, the current service cost, uh, any curtailment, settlement if we have, any past service cost if we have. so current service cost past service cost curtailment and settlement amount of the contribution paid amount of the benefits paid and then we have a remeasurement gain or loss and then finally a carry down so this is a standard table that you need to remember in this we have a column by the name of dbo a plan asset and a net liability So these are three columns that we normally prepare in case of a IS 19 question. Amartya is saying that investment property has already been credited. Then why we are crediting it again? Amartya, we are not crediting the investment property again. We have recorded the entry that this is the correct entry that should have been recorded, and this is the incorrect entry recorded by the question. So according to these, we have recorded a correcting entry as PPE debit by two. Retained earnings credit by two, 
So we have not credited the, credited the investment property again. It is only being credited once by the question itself. We have not credited it again. Okay, so now let's get back to the question. The question had informed us that the net liability was 15 and the contribution was 6. So if I write it down, I'm going to say that the net liability brought down was 6 and the amount of con was 15 and the amount of contribution was 6, which means a negative 6 in the net liability. Now the question for this says that current service cost for the year was 5 million and the interest rates on good quality corporate bonds fell from 8% at the start of the year to 6% at the year end. Now the question has given us two different rates, one at the start of the year and one at the end of the year. Which rate is relevant to us? The rate at the start or, or the rate at the end? Which rate is relevant? Rate at the start or rate at the end? Chandan is saying average, a new rate. Okay, start, 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 end, start. Yes, the, the, the rate at the start is relevant to us actually. So we will be using 8% to calculate the interest and 5 million at the, as the current service cost. So I'm using 5 million as the current service cost and applying 8% to calculate the interest. So 8% of 15 is 1.2. Thank you to them. So the interest is 1.2. Now the question further say is that in addition, a payment of $3 million was made out of the cash of the pension scheme in relation to employees who left the scheme. The reduction in the pension scheme liability as a result of curtailment was $4 million. So 4 million relates to curtailment and 3 million relates to what? What is 3 million? Is this benefits paid or is this settlement against the curtailment? What do people think? Is this settlement or is this benefits paid? Tondera is saying settlement. Umar Abdullah is saying benefits paid. Nida is saying benefits paid, settlement, benefits paid, settlement. Okay, this is basically settlement because this 3 million actually relates to the payment um, of 3 million was made out of cash to the pensions. Cash of the pension scheme in relation to employees who left the scheme, not employees who, who have already been retired. Pension benefits paid are to the employees who have retired, not to the employees who are leaving the company. So this is basically treated as settlement. So 4 million for curtailment, 3 million for settlement will mean 1 million as a net liability. So 1 million will be taken to the net liability. Now the question for this says that the actuary has assessed that the scheme is in deficit by 17 million at 31st October 2015. So this is the carried down balance of 17. The question is not given as the benefits paid. There is no past service cost. So can you calculate the balancing figure as remeasurement gain or loss? What is the balancing figure? Umar Abdullah, you can discuss this with me personally. So 2.8 is the balancing figure positive or negative? Is this 2.8 positive or negative? Positive. So this means that this is a net loss, remeasurement loss. So now what entry do we make is actually the entry is going to be made 
where interest, current service cost, past service cost, and curtailment settlement is recorded in PL, with the remeasurement gain or loss being taken to OCI, the contribution being taken to being paid against the bank, and the non current liability increased from 15 to 17, increased by 2 million. So my entry is going to be PL debit by the total. What is the total? 5.2 OCI debit by 2.8 the bank being credited by 6 and the non current liability being credited by 2 now this is the correct entry that should have been made in the financial statements but the entry recorded by the question was this one this is the incorrect entry recorded by the question so now actually PL means retail earnings and OCI means OCE. So this was the correct entry and the entry recorded by the question is retail earnings debit and bank credit by six. So now we will be preparing the correcting entry. Now we will be preparing the correcting entry. So what should be the correcting entry bank has been recorded correctly. What is the correcting entry? Debiting retail earnings, crediting OCE and non current liability by 2 and OCE debit by 2. So retail earnings is actually credit 2.8 OCE to non current liability and retail earnings by 0 0.8. So this is the final correcting entry that we should be recording in the adjustment number five. Any confusion so far? Okay, that's good. So now all adjustments are done except for the impairment for which we will be covering working number two first. So let's move on to the new slide. Now let's have a total of these values. So 50 plus 56 plus 8 plus 6 minus 1. Okay, all, uh, are, are all of you with me? 119 is the total. So let me use the calculator as well. So it's 50 plus 56 plus 8 plus 6 minus 1 is going to be 119. So 119 is the total and 50 plus 74 plus 12 plus 6 minus 1 is going to be 141. For the foreign subsidiary it is going to be 468 and this is going to be 210 plus 292 minus 7.5 is 494.5. But from here, a new step is going to start because if we look at these values, if we look at these values, these are basically the values in dinars. 
so we first uh, we first need to convert them into dollars before applying any further thing so which rates are we going to use the rates at the date of acquisition and at the balance sheet date so the rate at the acquisition date was 8 and the balance sheet date is 9.5 so i will be dividing this by 8 and dividing this by 9.5 so that I can get the values in dollars. So 468 divided by 8 is going to be 58.5. And 494.5 divided by 9.5 is going to be 52.1, let's say, a rounded off value. So the net assets are actually increasing 141 minus 119 by 22. Out of which parent has an 80% share, which is going to be 17.6. And NCI has a 20% share being 4.4. Yes, Nabila, you are right so far. Balancing figure one is a gain actually, not a loss. Because the curtailment is of four and the settlement is of three. So we are at a gain of one. The, the decrease in liability is four and the decrease in assets is three. So we are at a gain of one. So now if we look over here, the, the value is decreasing by 6.4, in which parent has a 60% share and NCI has a 40% share. So 6.4 into 60% is going to be 3.84. And 6.4 into 40% is going to be 2.56. So these are the values that we have actually calculated. Now, even from this parent share of 17.6, we are going to divide it into retail earnings and OCE. If you remember the last question, we had calculated the value of OCE such that the value is increasing by 4 and we have an 80% share in this 4. So 80% of 4 will be taken to we will be taken to OCE as 3.2 with the remaining 14.4 being taken to the retail earnings. Now, we the entry will be non current liability debit by 4. Plan asset credit by three, so the balancing figure is one credit. So it will be a gain, not a loss. Liability debit three, plan asset credit. Liability debit four, plan asset credit three, balancing taken to be. Sabha wants to know the last split. Sabha, actually, if we see at, at our working number one, the OCE was increasing, the OCE was increasing from 8 to 12. So, so the OCE has been increased by 4 in which we have a 80% share. So 80% of 4 will become 3.2. So 3.2 will be taken to OCE, the balancing figure being taken to the retail earnings. 17.6 minus 3.2 is 14.4 taken to retail earnings. This is 14.4. Okay. Now we have to do the similar task for, for, the, no, uh, for the foreign subsidiary as well. We have to divide this between retail earnings and OCE. 
but this task is something which is a bit difficult to understand and to learn both so do listen this carefully i will try my by level best to make you people understand that if we see that this 6.4 actually contains two impacts the impact of the net assets and the and the impact of the exchange rate this 6.4 negative has two impacts the impact of the net assets and the impact on from the exchange rate so we have to incorporate both the impacts so how we are going to do the net assets if you see are increasing by what amount 494.5 494.5 minus 468, which is 26.5. So the net assets are increasing by 26.5 million dinars. Now we are going to convert this profit using the average rate. What was the average rate during the year given in the question? The average rate was 8.5. The average rate rate was 8.5. So if I divide this by 8.5, and if I take my 60% share into this, I will get the amount that relates to basically the profits, the net assets. So 26.5 divided by 8.5 into 0 0.60 will give us 1.87. So 1.87 is actually the amount that should be recorded in the retail earnings. 1.87 is the amount that should be recorded in the retail earnings. Increase in net assets divided by the average rate into the percentage holding should be taken to the retail earnings. Getting this working, you people? All of you? Now the total share was a negative 3.84. So we will be calculating OCE as a balancing figure. How? Minus 3.84 minus 1.87 will give us minus 5.71. So in OCE, the value should be taken as minus 5.71. This is a balancing figure. Negative 3.84 minus 1.87 will give us the balancing figure. B5.71. So this is how we are going to divide the, the net assets of a foreign subsidiary between retail earnings and OCE. Yes, telling this means that 5.71 is basically the exchange loss. This means that 5.71 is basically the exchange loss. The remaining amount that we have calculated is due to the exchange rate movement. Now we have done working number one. Let's calculate good rate in working number two. So I'm calculating working number two, which is goodwill. In Goodwill, we actually calculate the cost and we add the fair value of NCI and then we deduct the fair value of the net assets. You remember this working? Cost plus the fair value of NCI. less the fair value of the net assets acquired.
So we have actually two subsidies. This is our first subsidiary by the name of SORT. Now, what was the cost of the first subsidiary? If we go ahead and see, the cost of the first subsidiary was actually from the balance sheet, it was 110. The cost was 110 from the balance sheet. And the cost of the second subsidiary given to us was actually 258. No, 258 is the retail earnings. Cost was 368. I think I should be using a pen instead. The cost was 368 with the fair value of NCIB 220. So the cost was 368 dinars and the NCI was 220. This will become 500. And 88 and for the normal subsidy it was the NCI was 25 and the cost was from the balance sheet 110 so 110 plus 25 will give us 135 so if I calculate the net assets from upwards this was 119 and for the second subsidiary, it was 468. So the goodwill would become 135 minus 119 will give you 16. And this will become 120. But 120 is basically 120 million dinars. So we actually now need to apply the exchange rate onto this. The exchange rate will actually convert the goodwill into dollars. At which rate should we, at which rate should we be converting this into uh, uh, dollars? What do you think? At which rate should this be converted into retail earnings uh, uh, into uh, the dollars? For this, we actually say that you, you should be using both the rates, the rate at the rate of acquisition, which was 8, and the rate at the balance sheet rate, which is 9.5. We will be using both the rate of 8 and 9.5. So first, I am using the rate of 8, and then I am using the rate of 9.5. But there is one more problem, that the goodwill has also been impaired by what amount? By 20 percent if we go back on to adjustment number three and we see adjustment number two that the goodwill was impaired by 20 percent so the goodwill has been impaired by 20 percent of what 20 percent means uh, 20 percent of 120 so the goodwill has been impaired by 24 and at the balance sheet date the goodwill is now 96 the goodwill at the balance sheet date is now actually 96. So the goodwill is 96 now. And the rate was 8 and 9.5 at the balance sheet date. So the goodwill at the acquisition date would become 120 divided by it being 15. And now 96 divided by 9.5 being 10.1. This means that the goodwill has been reduced by what amount? By 4.9. So the goodwill has actually reduced by 4.9 in which some share belongs to parent being 
and remaining 40% belonging to the NCI. So 4.9 into 0.6 will give you 2.94 actually belongs to the parent and 4.9 into 40% 1.96 actually belongs to the NCI. So the goodwill was actually 120 and now it's 96 because of the impairment. Impairment was of 24 being 20% in the adjustment number 2. Mohammed Hassan is saying why they have used two rates because Hassan the goodwill was 120 at the date of acquisition when the rate was 8 and now the goodwill is 96 and the rate is 9.5. So we are required to actually use both the rates, the date of acquisition and the balance sheet rate. Because originally the goodwill was calculated at the acquisition date and but we are we are we are writing down the goodwill in the balance sheets, that is why we are going to use the balance sheet date rate. So this is negative 4.9, negative 1.96 and negative 2.94. Tell him this is not a negative goodwill, this is a negative value of 4.9. Negative goodwill would mean that the goodwill is entirely negative. Now there is one more issue. If you see that this 4.9 actually uh, is due to two reasons, due to the net assets and due to the exchange rate. The exchange rate impact is taken to OCI and the net assets, the impairment impact is taken to PNL. So what do we need to do is one more thing that we are going to divide 24 of the impairment loss of goodwill by the average rate of 8.5 and we will be taking 60% of this to retail earnings because out of this 2.94 some value should be taken to retail earnings and the exchange rate impact should be taken to OCE. So the impairment loss was 24 million dinar divided by 8.5 into 60% will give us actually the amount of 1.69 that this, this impairment loss, the impairment loss actually belongs to the value of 1.69 which should be taken to retail earnings and the remaining value should be taken to the OCE. So if I calculate the remaining value It will be negative 2.94 minus negative 1.69 which will give us a value of 1.25. So in OCE the value of 1.25 should be taken. Yes, we will be taking Nawaz rate after completing working number 2. Nabil is saying, can you repeat the exchange rate calculation you have done? Actually, if you see that behind this 4.9, actually there are two reasons. One reason is the impairment of 24 due to which the goodwill has reduced. This impairment should be recorded in PNL. And the second reason is the increase in, in, in the exchange rate. The exchange rate impact should be taken to OCI. Now how are we going to divide this? For this what do we do? We see at this value the difference being 24. We divide this by the average rate being 8.5 so that it converts into the dollars and then we take 60% because our share is actually 60%. So 60% of this is going to be 1.69 negative taken to the PNL. With the remaining balancing figure 1.25 belonging to the OCE as it relates to the exchange gain or loss. So this is how we have completed our working number two. If you have any question you can ask then we will be moving towards a namaz break and continuing after 10 minutes. Any questions in this? So let's take a 10 minutes break of prayer break and then we are going to continue 
at around 7.15. And then we'll be solving working number three, working number four, and then, and then we'll be solving the balance sheets. Let, let's have a break and then continue after a short while.
Okay, everyone, let's continue again. So we were solving the question and we had done uh, working number one and working number two. So now let's solve working number three. Working number three is basically NCI in which we take fair value of NCI adding the share of profit to it. So the fair value of NCI in the goodwill was 25 and 220. The fair value of NCI was 25 and 220. So 25 and 220 is actually 220 million dinars. So we are going to divide this by uh, by the opening rate 8, which will give us 220 divided by it being 27.5 million dollars and we is asking that from where this 96 came from this 96 is the billet 120 of goodwill minus 20 percent impairment 120 goodwill minus 20 percent impairment of 24 will become 96 Now let's add the share of profit. Share of profit of NCI was 4.4 and 2.56. So we will be adding 4.4 and 2.56 from working number one. And then we'll be adding another share of profit from working number two, which is going to be negative 1.96 and zero. And this 2.56 was also negative. This 2.56 was also negative, sharing negative 6.4. So this will become 20.6 and 27.5 minus 2.56 minus 1.96 will be 22.98. This is actually 29.4. 29 29.4. 29 uh, so now 1.69 is the median earnings. I've taken 1.96 from over here. 1.96 is from the NCI. Okay, so now let's solve working number four. Working number four is basically retail earnings and OCE. For this, the value will be taken from the parents balance sheet, which is bubble, and then we have salt, and then we have T. In T, we have two working, working number one and working number two. So let's take the profits of bubble the being the parent. Value in bubble's financial statements was actually 230 and 40. These values. So it is going to be 230 and 40. And then from working number two, we have negative 1.69 and negative 
game. Yes, Amatya, I will explain you the curtailment concept at the end because I've already discussed twice or thrice. So first, let's complete the question. So now we need Saul's profit. Saul's profit was actually in working number one, 14.4, 3.2. Fourteen point four and three point two positive, and from the subsidiary T, it was positive one point eight seven, negative five point seven one. Positive one point eight seven and negative five point seven one. So these are the values for for parent and both the subsidiaries. Now let's incorporate the adjustments that we have written in the double entries. We are going to credit the OCE by one, retail earning by 1.4. So positive 1.4, positive one. And then debit by 2.8, credit by 0 0.8. So credit 0 0.8, debit 2.8 will give us the values relating to retail earnings and the OCE. So now let's calculate the total 230 plus 14.4 plus 1.87 minus 1.69 plus 1.4 plus 0 0.8 will be 246.78. 246.78 will be the sum. And 40 plus 3.2 minus 5.71. Minus 1.25 plus 1 minus 2.8 will be 34.44. Thank you, Rishum. We have got these numbers from the adjustments. Uh, adjustment 5, 2.8 and 0.8. And adjustment four, one and one point four. So this is adjustment number four, and this is adjustment number five. Okay, now let's finally prepare the balance sheet, consolidated balance sheet. In consolidated balance sheet, we will be having. I'm using the keyboard. Write it down if I can. So property, plant and equipment will be 280 plus 105 plus 390. And instead of investment in subsidies, we'll be writing goodwill from working number two. We'll be having financial assets in current assets Financial asset will be 12 plus 9 plus. Now the problem is that these values are in dinars. So we need to divide them by the closing rate of 9.5. And similarly inventory is 20 plus 12 plus 16 divided by 9.5. Trade and other receivables will be 30 plus 25 plus 36 divided by 9.5. Cash and cash equivalents will be 14 plus 11 plus 90 divided by 9.5. So these are the values before any adjustments. Now let's see the adjustment. In adjustment we have Credited financial asset, debited PP. So PP debit means plus 2.4 and minus 5. Apart from this, we had some fair value adjustments in working one also. 
So if I move to working number one, we need to add six in the property plant equipment as well. So I'm writing plus six. Any other adjustment left? No, let's close this. So PPE will become 280 plus 105 plus 390 divided by 9.5 plus 2.4 plus 6 will give us 434.4 goodwill that we have calculated previously in working number 2 was 16 and 10.1 which will be 26.1 16 and 10.1 will become 26.1 Financial is 12 plus 9 plus 98 divided by 9.5 minus 5 is going to be 26.3. And the inventory receivables in cash 20 plus 12 plus 20 plus 12 plus 16 divided by 9.5 minus 5 is going to be 28.7 and 30 plus 25 plus 36 divided by 9.5 is going to be 58.8 8 14 plus 11 plus 90 divided by 9.5 it's going to be 34.5 we can say so 434.4 plus 26.1 plus 26.3 plus 28.7 plus 58.8 plus 34.5 is going to be 608.8 so this this is the debit side to us now let's prepare the credit side in which we have equity shares of 80 we have retain earnings from working for we have OCE from working four. We have NCI from working three. And then we have non current liabilities and current liabilities. So non current liability will be 95 plus 7 plus 110 divided by 9.5. And 67 plus 19 plus 18 divided by 9.5. And apart from this, we have some fair value adjustments, which is one in the current liabilities and 7.5 in the non current liabilities. So plus 7.5 divided by 9.5 because this is in dinars, and plus 1 minus 5 from the double entries, and plus 2 from the double entries. So equity shares is going to be 80 retain earnings and OCE and NCI will be from the workings. So NCI was 29.4 plus 22.98 52.38 NCI is 52.38 let's call this 4 let's call this 38 and retain earnings are 
Now let's calculate the non-current liabilities and current liabilities which is going to be 95 plus 7 plus 110 divided by 9.5 plus 7.5 divided by 9.5 minus 5 plus 2 triple 1.4 and 67 plus 19 plus 18 divided by 9.5 plus 1 is going to be 88.9 now let's calculate the total this is 80 plus 246.78 plus 34.44 plus 52.38 plus triple 1.4 and plus 88.9 is going to be 613.9 minus 608.8 we have a difference of 5.1 now let's see why is the difference let's check the values 280 105 390 is okay 12, 9, 98 is okay, 20, 12, 16 is okay, 30, 25, 36 is okay, 14, 11, 90 is okay, 80 is okay, 95, 7 and 110 divided by 9.5, 67 plus 19 plus 18, all these values are right. Let's check the entries, non-current liability, debit 5, credit by 2. Let's check the inventory. It's 20 plus 12 plus 16 divided by 9.5. So it's 33.7 actually and we have written 28.7. So this is a calculation error. So this value will become, let's calculate it again, 434.4 plus 26.1 plus 26.3 plus 33.7 plus 58.8 plus 34.5 is going to be 613.8 so now our balance sheet has been balanced there was some calculation error so if you are following the right methods it is not possible that your balance sheet gets out so that is how you are expected to calculate a balance sheet of foreign subsidiary any questions in this Mohammed Hassan is asking in retail earnings which rate we should use in retail earnings we will be using the average rate because retail earnings means profits and profits are calculated at the average rate Mudassar Hussain wants to know some important questions relating to consolidation Mudassar I will share on the whatsapp group uh, about the important questions Sabha is asking what would what would be your advice on how to revise between now and the exam for someone that works full time memorizing the standards and questions. Sabha actually for consolidation I will recommend you to solve few of the questions. If you are doing the questions appropriately uh, you can prepare well. Like for example let me inform you the questions. Look for complex groups you have only two questions one by the name of mini that we have already solved and one by the name of trailer you can solve these two for piecemeal acquisition I would recommend you people to solve a question by the name of traveler and Robin for for the topic of disposal you have two questions Kuchin and diamond you can solve these two questions for disposal and for foreign subsidiary you can solve bubble and you can solve rose these two are good questions for income statement you can solve merchant you can solve ashanti and you can solve the the recent question of december 2017 
and for cash flow statements we will be solving jocat apart from this you can solve angel and western so these are the questions if you are solving these six areas the questions then i think you are you are well prepared for question number 1 at least okay for joyce is saying so sir how we adjust and make it balance for if if your balance sheet is not being balanced in the exam then 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 leave it do not go into too much detail krishna is saying can i sit for this june exam session if i start preparing from today krishna if you have already paid the fees then you have no other option to start studying as soon as possible chandra is saying how to prepare for ethics part i will share uh, uh, i will share a handout for ethics if you if you solve that handout you will be in a good situation to solve the ethics question so by saying what about the rest of the papers for section b we will be solving uh, in day 4 and 5 some of the questions i think uh, after solving that you will be in a, a better situation to ask this question sabha so keep this question for day 4 and 5 mohammed ali saying said then what about ethics and standards please tell us the key questions mohammed ali i will be sharing some key questions for section b as well but once we have solved that it will be more easier for me you to to recommend some of the questions we are saying what are the key things that should come to mind for a foreign subsidiary question in foreign subsidiary questions basically working number 1 to 4 should be uh, if you have grip on working 1 to 4 this means that 80% of the question is already solved in in working 1 to 4 so i personally think that if if a foreign subsidiary question comes in the exam it will be a it will be easy marks for you people because working 1 to 4 is fixed if you even solve only that you are you are in a good situation mudassir i will be sharing cash flow statements procedures tomorrow inshallah so it will be better if you ask this question tomorrow nabila section b questions will be there in day 4 and day 5 so let's wait till then because then your 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 people question uh, your questions will be more relevant to me So I think that is all for today. Alhamdulillah, we have covered our target beforehand. This is the first time in my webinar history that I have solved a question beforehand, and this is, I think, your your speed that has made made it more easier to solve quickly. Nabila will be sharing ethics area, and I will be sharing the lectures because I have 15 minutes extra right now. So I'll be converting these documents into PDF, and we'll be sharing in in within 10 to 15 minutes, inshallah. so uh, you people can provide the feedback for today's session quickly so that we can end the session then today's feedback you people can share so that we can end the session and then i will be converting the documents into pdf and sharing on the whatsapp group krishna you can ask this question with uh, from me directly um, on my whatsapp personal number so i will be able to answer you more clearly over there yes saddam you need to calculate exchange gain gain and losses in oci as well Mahin, you can drop me an SMS on my contact number. I will add you in the WhatsApp group because of uh, a lot of messages on the WhatsApp. Approximately when I went home yesterday, so I had approximately approximately more than hundred messages. So it was very difficult for me to reply to everyone. So um, please, please be uh, have. Uh, I would request you all to have some patience in my reply. because a lot of messages will take me a lot of time as well krishna i've sent my contact number to you people you can save this number and you can contact me on that personally mohammad hasan karimi you can drop me an sms on whatsapp personally not on the group 
and we will try to find out some way for you to Okay, Sevenik is saying that where can we find the solution to these 12 questions? That is a good question, uh, Sevenik. Um, I will try to share the answers of these 12 questions, but that will be a big commitment from, from my side too. So I will try my level best if I can share the answers. In fact, actually, I have the answers. Rose, Bubble, Grange, Angel, Jokat, and mini Robbie Traveler. So I actually have the answers I will try to share with you people because these are the answers of my personal class classrooms, the online classrooms. So I will share these answers to uh, uh, with you people on the WhatsApp group. Mohammad Rabi Siddiqui, you can have the webinar recordings on the Vimeo channel of ACC Pakistan. Nabila, I teach in Karachi not in Lahore. Simon is asking what is meant by piecemeal acquisition. Simon, piecemeal means step acquisition where we are acquiring a subsidiary in multiple steps. Okay, everyone, thank you so much and looking forward to meet you all tomorrow with, with a consolidated cash flow statements.